Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. So today I want to start a brand new series on my channel focusing on specific kinds of sociology major jobs and walk through the kinds of experiences and classes that you should get while you're in college to get those jobs. Now for this whole series, I'm going to break the things that you need to do for your jobs down to a couple of common categories, things that you should be doing in your major required sociology classes, some of the sociology electives you might want to take, uh, good gen ed choices for that job, uh, minors that you might want to pair up with for that job, um, and also think about things that you need to do outside of the classroom because you should be growing outside the classroom as well as in the classroom. I'll even add some things that I think you should mention on your cover letter. But the end goal for all of these is going to be to focus on what you need for jobs. And today we're going to talk about data analysis jobs. Now data analysis jobs are excellent for sociology majors. There are tons of jobs out there. There's great pay involved and there's a lot of mobility and you can get these kinds of jobs all over the place or you can even work from home. But with data analysis jobs, you're working with data sets to describe them to other people, to run analyses, to write reports. Sometimes you're working for large firms. Sometimes you are working for local governments. But there's lots of job opportunities out there in this field. So let's talk about the kinds of things that you need if you're going to get a data analysis job with your sociology major. We got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Now, first things first, I want to break things down to our five common sociology classes for every major. You got an intro class, you've got a social stats or quantitative class, you've got some kind of research methodology class, a theory class, and probably a capstone or senior seminar. For the intro class, study the research methods because that's relevant to data analysis. Get super comfortable with that field and make an A on that quiz. Now with social stats or your quantitative research class, this is where you'll really start to get to work with data. Start learning a statistical package there if you can, and also start learning to write about data for wide audiences. Remember, not everyone's gonna know what the Kronbach Alpha is, so you need to be able to explain that to someone so that it makes sense. Now the research methods class, that's where your bread and butter, gold, everything is gonna be. You gotta make sure you get an A in this class. You need to work hard in this class too. You need to study sampling. You need to look at quantitative research. This is where you'll also probably get use of uh, statistical packages like R or SPSS. Um, you need to learn about data collection. You need to be able to design your own survey. You need to be able to assess the value and the quality of someone else's data. Uh, you need to understand research design. These are all critical ideas for data analysis jobs. So spend some time in that class being good at them. On the trade-off, you don't have to work as hard in your theory class. Make sure and pass it. But generally, the theory class is just going to give you some overarching big ideas. One big thing that you can learn out of that is the idea of inductive and deductive theories, because we can understand how theory might influence what we expect to find in our methodology uh, papers that we might be doing. Finally, in your senior seminar, you get a great chance to prove your worth. You get to prove that you know how to use a statistical package. So do some kind of paper and do a quantitative analysis. And you know, t-tests are a great entry-level thing if you can do something a little fancy like a regression, that would be great too. But try to do a quantitative paper. And also try to publish this paper in the undergraduate journal at your university or some other university. Now I'll start another series about publishing your research uh, later on. But if you have questions about that, you can always leave me questions in the comments because I'm happy to chat with you. Now, when you're completing your major, you don't just take those five classes. You got to take some electives, right? Usually four or five, give or take on the major. And here's some classes that I suggest. Now, a lot of these are just going to give you overarching ideas about how we use research and how we use statistics to understand our world at an overarching level. Demography gives you this really great idea of how we use uh, statistics to describe things like people being born, dying getting sick and so forth. Likewise, uh, stratification, social problems, sociology of work, these are all classes that help us understand macro use of quantitative statistics and research so that we can apply these findings to other people. Um, I always suggest, if you can, doing a directed research or independent study, depending on what your program calls it, with a faculty member that's like a quantitative uh, researcher and do some kind of quantitative paper that lets you test out your skills. Maybe you can collect a student survey using convenient sampling or something like that it doesn't have to be fancy but try to do some kind of research that you can practice your skills and I also suggest trying to publish that as well again these are all things that are going to help you on the job market publishing in a paper as an undergrad is actually easier than we might think 
So keep that in mind. Now, a lot of data analysis people are thinking they want to work in something like a social media organization. Facebook would be a classic example. If you're thinking about social media data analysis jobs, take a class in media and society or something similar that helps you understand this sort of more personal, um, you know, individual uh, approach to sociology and um, get some experience in that because it's going to be really helpful. Finally, any methodology course that comes through your program is going to be really valuable. Now, when you are doing your major, you're also going to be taking some gen ed classes. Gen ed classes are a really cool opportunity for you to widen your interests and take things that are outside your major. First, most gen eds are going to have some kind of diversity option. And I suggest taking a diversity class for any major because that's going to give you a great opportunity to understand how diversity works in our labor market. And that's something that you can talk about. But it's also going to give you a chance too, as a data analysis person to focus on the, the statistics and how we think about those. Even learning how you measure something like sex and gender might come out of a diversity related class. Um, next, if there's any computer science classes in your gen ed, take them. Take them without any question. You need to get those classes in there because it's going to give you some skills that you won't necessarily get in a sociology major. Even if it's learning how to care and maintain and run a computer, that's great. Take that because it's going to be useful for you going into your jobs. I suggest for your science, take a geography class. Geography classes are cool in that they include GIS, GPS, and other mapping stuff. And so this is kind of another skill set that A, you may not have realized that you would fall in love with it, and so you get that chance to, but B, it also can lead to jobs. In fact, I've seen some majors uh, with sociology majors, they end up going into data analysis, but they end up getting sort of geography related jobs because they like to use GIS. Hey, they pay well, it's a great job, and you're still doing the data analysis. Win, win. Finally, try to take an intro to communications class. You're in a field that you need to be able to communicate statistics to a wide audience, so communications will help you do that. Now you will likely have time to take a minor and minors are a great way to build on job skills. To that end, I suggest looking into minors in computer science, communications, geography, business, or statistics as part of your computer or your interest in uh, data analysis jobs. All of these minors are gonna give you things that you won't necessarily get as much of in your major, but you're gonna get those skills plus the advantage of being a sociology major and understanding how this entire system works and how the world operates. That's gonna make you a great fit for the job market. Now, you may not realize this, but you should be working on some job things outside of the classroom. And these are some basic things that I suggest for my sociology majors and really anyone because they're all great skills to have. First off, learn R. It's free. Repeat that. It's free. It's a great statistical software package. It does lots of other things as well. It gives you some great experience with coding and understanding how to uh, you know, use packages like that. Get confident with that. There's tons of free videos on YouTube and courses and all sorts of stuff on R that will let you learn how to recode variables, uh, do some basic analysis, create, remove variables. I've even got a couple of videos up on these things. So check those out. Um, take a free online course on Python, SQL, Java, something like that. It's just to give you a little extra experience with coding. You don't have to have a ton of experience, but you need to have some. SQL can be especially effective too because that can open up some data analysis jobs that um, really have a lot of upward mobility. But Python is also a great one because it's just a universal coding language. Uh, that's probably not the appropriate term for it, but so many people use it, it's a really great one. Between R and Python or SQL, you're gonna do great. Um, try to get some basic experience with coding too in some other language, even HTML, just so you feel comfortable moving back and forth between multiple languages. This is where I think some basic Java experience is a, a good practice, but really getting any kind of coding experience is gonna be good because you can list it on your cover letter. And if you have the financial resources, and it's not a lot, it's like a hundred bucks, maybe less, maybe a little more, but try to get a certification in any of these uh, coding languages. Um, for example, my university offers uh, a couple of different coding packages, and they're not really that expensive. I think they're around 100, 120 bucks for an online class that lasts like six weeks. Um, you work at your own pace and you just complete your weekly modules and you get a certificate at the end. But it'll take your skills up that extra notch by having that certification that you can include on your resume. 
All right, when you are getting ready to apply for these jobs, I just want to point out a couple of things that you might want to mention. You know, above and beyond the experience that you have and things that are particular to that kind of job, you want to point out that you have experience linking uh, data to statistics, I'm sorry, data and statistics to our society and our social trends. That you, you understand how to make this, you know, raw data set turned into something meaningful for your employer. I think it's also really good to point out that you don't understand how to measure ideas. Um, you understand how to measure things like emotion through Likert scales at that point. Um, but likewise, you can also design research that's really going to support, support whatever your employer needs. It's also really good to point out that you're diverse at that, that you can do a lot of different things if needed, because you never know what your employer is really going to need. You can also point out too that your degree has really helped you understand um, when and how to apply certain analysis techniques. Techniques You understand when to use a t-test versus a regression, for example. Um, and likewise too, it's great to point out that you have specific experience in coding packages, um, and like R, or SBSS, whatever that you might take in your, your major. Um, point them out, celebrate them. And likewise, point out that you're willing to learn new ones, that you feel comfortable adapting to new ones. And you know, even if you've done a cool analysis project or something with those languages, this is a great chance to sell that point out that you've got really cool job skills. So this is all stuff that you can be doing to make yourself better prepared for when you hit the job market. That's it. This should give you a lot of great starting ground for data analysis jobs. Make sure and leave some comments uh, letting me know how things go in your applications. Likewise, if you have questions, you can put those below. I always enjoy interacting with people and talking more about sociology major jobs. Likewise, if there's a job you think that I should talk about, let me know and I will definitely list that. This won't be the last one. We'll get a couple more of these out and uh, I'll just keep them coming. All right, that's it for today. If you have questions, you know where to reach me. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it if you can like and subscribe to support this new series and this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.